What's going on my nabooers? You want to see something cool? We were on RetroNet chat today having a little conversation about cloud CPM and somebody suggested, hey, you know that 80 column mode, text mode that everybody's been wishing the Naboo had? So I don't know if you've seen in one of the folders here, um, let's see if I can find it. I think it's under user two. There's a bunch of RetroNet stuff. You're gonna find a bunch of different programs. You see here like test seat column 64, column 80. That's not Commodore 64. <laughs> That's column 64, column 80. And I was, uh, I did a couple of these little example programs here so that you'll be able to see what different resolutions would look like in graphic mode simulating um, 80 column or 64 column, etc. Now, it's <laughs> it's pretty unreadable. Um, some people say in MAME they can read a little bit better. It's also very slow, so that obviously is going to cause an issue. And then the conversation led to, hey, what about some sort of virtual 80 column mode like this? Whoa! So pretty cool. You can uh, load up. CPM soon. I can, you cannot, because I haven't released this yet, and I'll tell you why. But let's take a look here at uh, another program. Let's look at, I think, four are games, right? Let's see here. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Because what I care about here is hitch.com. So let's get back over here. Hitch. Nice. Let's load Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is, as you know, an 80 column display. It is also using um, VT52 terminal emulation. And let's take a look here. So she's loading up. And as you can see, we got the title bar up here. This is part of the terminal emulation because up here will be where the um, your score and what room you're in is in. And if I hit right, we can scroll to the right and hey, there's our score. So we have built to the BIOS now VT52 terminal emulation. So let's stand up. And there we go. Well, you can see again, we have our status bar up here with our score. So that's super convenient. Let's get out of here. And a couple things you'll notice, um, for example, the cursor, when I was just answering yes, this question over here, the cursor was off the screen. That's pretty cool because it actually flashes only on screen. So if I move over, the cursor is actually flashing in this like virtual screen. <laughs> so that's kind of neat. Um, the thing I wanted to show you is back on to user two. If uh, we take a look in this folder again, I think there's something in here called VT test, VTest 52. So this is a program which will demonstrate the um, VT 52 emulation. So every time I hit the space bar, you see different things happening here. And this is going to clean, clear the screen from the center and make the X. There we go. So just kind of go through a bunch of these here. There you go. Under Cloud CPM are just a couple pictures because I only have one hand. It's going to be impossible to do, but I'm, you, can, you can use links over Telnet now. Um, you can use IRC. I even have screen working with split screens. I know there was discussions before about screen not being supported, so check it out. So down here I have Nano running. Up here I just have a, uh, a simple terminal, a shell terminal. And you can see here, let's see, um, I'll go through a few of these. So this is running links. So I'm running the nabu.ca website. All right, this is IRC running, and you have your status bar down here as well and everything. So um, yeah, terminal emula emulation is working really well. And of course, we have our virtual 80. Now, the reason why I can't release the virtual 80 yet is because we're using Z88 DK for our development. 
and they have a CPM parameter for compiling to build CPM programs. So the trouble is, is that, and we got a, I asked a question on the forum, I'm sure I'll get an answer by the time you see this video, but the interrupt, the keyboard interrupt that occurs in the BIOS to handle 16 character buffer, and also you can change the cursor of the screen and stuff because inside of the, inside of the keyboard interrupt, there's things going on in here. Okay, remember how we can change the, uh, the cursor of the keyboard by hitting our TV NABU button? Right now it puts a Z on the screen, you have to ignore that, I have to fix that. So you can see there's a flat cursor, there's a beefy cursor, there's the line cursor, or flat. Okay, so that happens inside of the interrupt. And as well as your viewport, moving your viewport by 10 when you hit the page up and page down keys. Now, the reason why you don't have access to the BIOS that I'm testing is because Z88DK will take over the interrupt and it'll own it. And I lose all of this. So there's no way to um, virtualize the screen. So I'll give you an example. I just boot up this version of the BIOS here. Let me just restart it. Let's go to our user two. Let's just run Telnet, for example. And I'm just gonna show you before I hit enter so you can watch it change. Keep an eye on these two here. When I hit enter on my Telnet, you're gonna see those values change. And that's because it took over the interrupts. Their, their CPM library took it over so that they can use STDN and CONIO and things like that. So. If I were to try to log into a computer, you're going to see that the screen is bigger <laughs> and I have no way to scroll over to there because um, my page up and page down key interrupt is not being taken care of. So I can't release the BIOS because Telnet won't work. And that's the way it is. Unless I recompile Telnet to only work in 40 column mode, but that's not very cool. We wanted to work with this. So I'm sure they'll have a, an example for us pretty soon. So what you don't have on the newest BIOS is just the scrolling for the virtual terminal. What you do have in the newest BIOS that you can be running is the VT52 emulation. So you can go ahead, um, run Telnet and run different programs that require VT52 emulation and everything will work just hunky-dory. Now until the Z88DK is solved, um, you won't get access to this just yet. But that's okay because I think there's a little bit of optimization I can do in the scrolling um, when this is occurring too because the virtual screen is bigger. Use a little bit more RAM because of the double buffer, but I think I can work on some performance improvements there. Okay. Um, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.